everybody, and welcome to our second IBIS Leading Lights webcast. We can't be together in person right now, but we wanted to continue to deliver the IBIS experience to you. And that experience is very much focused on thought leadership, innovative content, and know-how sharing. For today's Leading Light, we have an organization, JIPA, who are leading the way in terms of data and analysis during the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly focused on the automotive aftermarket and including data related to collision repair. Today, we're delighted to have the president of JIPA, Eric Devos. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this Leading Lights presentation from Eric Davos. Hello, everybody. I am Eric Davos, president of JIPA Group. I am very happy to join you today following a demand of IBIS concerning this webinar. Few information before my presentation concerning JIPA Group. JIPA is a market intelligence company. The company was founded 34 years ago in Europe and we are specialized in the automotive sector concerning passenger car, two wheels, EV duty. We are making some qualitative and quantitative researches and we are able to provide very good data to all our clients, to all the players, to understand the market, to be able to anticipate and to allow all decision makers to take the best decision. Who are JIPA data users? We can split our clients in mainly six different groups. We have some car manufacturers, for example, 19 different brands who produce cars. The bigger group of our clients is a parts manufacturer with some big company like Bosch or Valeo or some specialists like Clios for battery or Sojifi for filters. We have the, the key, the premium tire manufacturers. We have some lubricant company, some service provider, auto center, fast fitter, distribution, trade groups, and so on. And we have some other clients who are in the group others because they are involved in a finance, technical inspection, training, and so on. Regularly, we have more than 160 different clients over the world. So many different clients. One of the reasons why is that we have a very large coverage. As you can see on this map, we are able to cover more or less all Latin America, from Mexico to Argentina. We have a very good coverage of the Western Europe. We are in North and South of Africa. We have also a good uh, coverage on the East side, Central Europe, Poland, Ukraine, Turkey, Russia, and also a very good footprint in Asia with uh, more 10 years experience in China. We are in uh, India, in Japan, in South Korea, in Thailand, in Malaysia, in Indonesia. Now, let's talk about the subject of today. Today, I want to present you some figures, some analysis concerning the effects and the consequences of the COVID-19 crisis concerning the automotive aftermarket. And for you today, we decided to select some figures who come from the five main countries in Europe. In each country, we selected a representative sample of repairers. As you can see there, in total, we have, for example, for independent medical garages, more than 1,100 workshops. We have in total, at vehicle manufacturer dealer or franchise dealer, 580 outlets. For body and paint shop, it's 280 workshops. And we have also 350 tire specialists. Then really, we can provide some trustable figure to analyze what is the situation during this crisis. On this slide, you can see the calendar of the program. The program includes four waves. You can see that the first one started from 23 of March. The second wave was done from 6 of April. The third one started on 20 of April. And now, since 4th of May, we are on the field to collect the data for the fourth wave. 
Then now I can show you the data from the wave one to wave three. And then for each measure, we can see what is the value, what are the trends. For the first uh, question we asked to the workshop is to know if they are open or not. How is your workshop today? You can see the answer on this uh, slide. You can see that for the first wave, the number of outlets able to serve the clients was a little bit more than half, 51%. More or less, we registered the same value during the second waves, in average for EU5, of course. But clearly, for the third wave, you can see a takeoff. Now we won eight points in comparison with two weeks before. 58 percent of the outlets are able to serve the clients. Of course, differences affect this uh, average. First point, we don't have the same performance in each country. For example, in uh, Germany, more or less, more or less all outlets are open. In France, in average, during the first wave, it's uh, two thirds. It's a little bit less than half in the UK, and it's only 40% in Italy, and one third, 33% in Spain. Then we have some differences at country level, but we have also some differences at channel level. The performance, the dynamic at channel level is not the same in each country. Let's see the channel uh, performance uh, on the next slide. We can analyze the performance at channel level in two different ways. The first way is to analyze the trends. At trends level, you can see that the, for the VM dealer, the performance is not bad. Plus six points of uh, VM dealer outlets are available for the clients. We have three compared with wave two. For the independent medical garage, it's much better. It's eight point more than, the first, than in, during the, the second wave. However, the winner is the last two channels with plus 10 points for the tire specialist and plus 10.2 concerning the body shop in comparison with the previous wave. This is a positive trend, very good. Now, another point interesting to see is what is the level. You can see that more than half, 57% of the vehicle manufacturer that dealer are open for the clients. Okay, but is it homogeneous or not between the different countries? Not, clearly. For example, in Germany, more or less 100% of the VM dealer remain open when it's only, it's increasing, but it's only 63%, for example, in France. If we have a look about the rate for the independent medical grade channel, it's more or less a uh, little bit better than uh, for the vehicle manufacturer dealer, 58%. What is the situation? Stable in Germany, at a very high level, close 100%. Stable in the UK, but at a much lower level, because it's 51% of the independent medical garage in the UK who are available during the wave three. At a um, French level, we have a regular increase, and we reached, uh, during the, first, the third wave, 65% of the uh, IMG uh, available for the client. It's today 30 points more than in Spain. At tire specialist level, you can see that this is the winner with 67%, more than two thirds of the outlets who are available for the clients. Again, very high rate of outlets available in Germany in a stable situation. For all the other countries, this channel are increasing. The, however, the lowest level is recorded in Spain with 41% of the tire specialists only who are available for the client. At Bosch D shop level, it's the opposite of the tire specialist. It's the lowest performance. 55% of the body shop are open during the wave uh, three. Uh, different situation over the country. It's, for example, 68% in France, more than two thirds, but it's only 40% in Italy and 28% in Spain. One of the reasons why is also the difficulties of this player to uh, get the parts to repair uh, to, for, for the body repair. 
It's a, a big issue that we can see in the different countries of Europe. We can see on this slide how, what, how many, what is the share of each uh, channel outlet who are open. Now it's interesting to see how is the activity, how is the business in the different channels. It's what we can see on the next slide. At business level, you can see that the situation is really dramatic. Since the beginning of the crisis, mid of uh, March, when we compare what is the turnover, what is the financial the business activity in uh, the Europe uh, EU5, in comparison with the same period one year ago, we have a drop of 80%. It's really, really dramatic. Two weeks later, it's even worse. We dropped to minus 83% in comparison with last year. During the third waves, we are still at an incredible level. Of course, we can, we can tell, okay, it's uh, six points better than uh, two weeks ago, but it's still minus 77% less than the normal business in uh, references last year. Yeah, this is a very, very bad situation. Right? And we can be very worried about uh, this uh, situation. Of course, it's a little bit better for companies who are open, but it's not the paradise, huh? because for companies who are open today, it's in average minus 61% of uh, activity uh, for those uh, that are open. It's very, very dramatic. Um, can we find some differences in if we compare the different channel? Let's see the next uh, slide. At channel level, the situation is very bad. Very bad for all channel. Very dramatic for all channel. We can see that at tire specialists, it's the better performance among the channel with minus 70% in comparison with uh, uh, the same week last year. Badder at a more or less the same level, minus 75% for IMG, minus 77% for, for VM dealer very bad situation and the worst situation is for the body shop with minus 83 percent in comparison with uh, the same week last year and he, also at trans level the situation of the body shop channel is very bad because have a look about all the other channels it's better 13 point for tire specialist it's better seven point for the independent medical garage is better three points for the VM dealer. But the situation of the body shop is very bad and stable. Stable at a very low level at business and activity level. This is the situation today at channel level, at country level. And another point to follow together is also to have a look together about what is the situation at workforce level. We can see this last point on the next slide. At workforce and employee capacity level, we reach during the third wave the rate of 38% only of the employees who are present, globally speaking, in all the channels in EU5. Clearly, we are in a downward trend because it's two points less than two weeks ago, and two weeks ago was three points less than the first wave of our barometer. If we have a look about the situation, the, the, the rate of employees present in the workshop who are open to the client, we started our barometer with 78% of the employee of the open workshop. We lost five points during the second wave with 73. And between the second and the third wave, we lost 10 points, 63% of the employee. If we have a look about uh, the situation among the channel, we can see on the right side that it's quite an important drop at employee presence level in um, the VM dealer channel. Less 12 points. It was more or less stable. It was perfectly stable during the, 
in wave two compared with wave one, but we lose 12 points in the third wave. At IMG level, we have a better situation because we reach a better rate, globally speaking, in uh, EU5, right? with, uh, with, minus, uh, with uh, plus uh, five points in comparison with wave two. Much better situation, very good performance at tire specialist workforce level, because it's more than half percent of the workforce who are globally speaking now today in this uh, channel. It's a very big increase with plus 19 points in comparison with the wave two. At body shop level, unfortunately, you can see that the trend is negative since the first wave. We move for, from 40% to 34 and now three point less, 31 only. Of course, the situation is not the same in different countries. And it's very interesting because we can see that um, two countries have a drop. We have a drop at workforce level in body shop in Germany, and we have a drop in Italy with four point less than during the wave two. But two, two countries have an increase of the workforce in body shop uh, channel. It's in France with plus 10 points, and also in Spain with 14 points more than during the wave two. This is the situation concerning the, the workforce level at channel level. And now it's interesting to see what is the situation of a survey we did in France for FFC. What is FFC? FFC is Fédération Française de la Carrosserie. We did a survey for FFC and I selected the key figures concerning this survey and I am happy to present you the key figures of this survey with the authorization of the FFC. For this uh, survey, we did a specific analysis for Fédération Française de Carrosserie. It's a French Body Worker Association. We did an interview of more than 200 body shop from 6 to 9 of uh, April. And the conclusion are the following. Close half are closed, 49%. When they are open, 51%. It's mainly to manage the urgencies, <coughs> nothing more. When they are closed, the first reason why they are closed, six to third of them, is because lack of clients. And you know that sometimes it's impossible and not allowed to move from one point to another point. And also the drop of the annual uh, kilometer um, generate much less crash and uh, accident than uh, previously. When they try to make some maintenance, some uh, to repair, some, uh, some to make some body repair, sometimes they have some um, problems to, to get the, the parts, the body parts. And it's uh, uh, mentioned by 61% of the French body worker. The third reason why they close is much lower reason, but it's because of the sanitary procedure, not clear, lack of information, and so on and so on. Concerning the business and the activity, two thirds are worried about the business. However, they recognize for two thirds again that the association, Fédération Française de la Carrosserie, can help. It's not bad, and eh? they need it. It's a lot of small structure, and then the association can provide a lot of support. If they imagine the future and the next step, the first hope they have is a cancellation of charges and taxes. One quarter, more than one quarter, 26% of the body worker expect this. At the Low, much, uh, lower level, only 24%, they expect quickly the end of the lockdown, well, of course. And for less than one-fifth of them, they would like a financial support for this uh, specific period. This is some uh, key uh, figures of the survey we did for Fédération Française de la Carrosserie. And now, thank you very much for your attention, and I am at your disposal if you have any questions.
Welcome back, everybody, and thanks, Eric, for that really engaging presentation. Some very, very interesting data points there. Um, it's been great to work with uh, with GPA over the last uh, few years as part of IBIS, and I know Eric, we've worked together in many different markets. Um, with you presenting some of the exciting um, data points that GPA has. Um, first question to you, as, as president of an organisation. Um, how has it been for GIPA in these uh, in these last couple of months uh, navigating the pandemic? How have you um, how have you been as a business, and how are you, and how how are, how are your staff? Thank you very much, Jason, for this uh, question. In GIPA, we manage a lot of uh, interview, and a lot of interview are done in face to face in all uh, regions in in Asia, in Russia, in all Europe, in Latin America. And of course, with the pandemic, it's a very big issue because face-to-face -face interview in this, in this situation is really a big problem. Fortunately, we were a little bit lucky because um, um, we started in Asia when the lockdown was more or less finished, and we did all the face-to-face -face interview in Europe before the lockdown. Then, when the lockdown arrived, we were very lucky because it was only an analyst task and it was quite easy to do it uh, remotely from home for all our analysts. Then uh, we are lucky again because during the COVID and the lockdown, we, was able, we were able to provide a lot of data, a lot of information to all our clients. And also, because we are using the same methodology in all the country, able to make some comparison like the uh, few figures we saw together. And now, uh, of course, uh, it's an, a new step, and we, all the team is very motivated and ready to go ahead with all our clients and partners. Great, great. So, first question, first question I have re regarding the data. So, you looked at uh, you looked at five uh, five countries in your data uh, within within Europe. Um, just give us a just give us a summary of, of, of just very briefly of how how you sort of collected that data and who you worked with in those various different markets. Maybe you could give an an example of one market and how you sort of collected the data. Um, well, uh, we use uh, two type of uh, way to collect the data. First point, we have a very big quantitative researches among uh, the drivers during the first quarter, and then we collect a lot of information also regarding the COVID, uh, the, the, the driver behavior in the COVID situation. And then to follow the situation, we uh, recall, we interviewed every two weeks a representative sample of the driver in each country to measure country per country how the situation is changing, how the driver anticipate the situation, and how the actor or the players can finally take the best decision. And yeah. what is crazy in this period is that the pandemic is not exactly the same. If you compare um, uh, Italy and the UK, for example, Italy yes. was affected by the pandemic much before uh, the UK. And then, despite the fact that we did the survey the same week in all the countries, it was uh, really different in the in the behavior and the results. And also, we can see that the, 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 the effect of the pandemic is not the same in all countries. If you compare Germany, for example, with uh, the south of Europe, the effect of the pandemic is totally different. Yeah. And of course, yeah. the driver behavior and the repairer behavior is also different. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's I think the important point is uh, sounds like what's very valuable in your data is you're constantly taking uh, uh, data points. You're not just doing one survey and that's yeah. it. You know, you're constantly tracking how things are moving, the rate things are changing, and that's why there's a you know a, a lot of value in the data that you've collected. Yeah, yeah. It's what we are doing. Uh, sorry, my phone. <laughs> it's what we are doing uh, specifically uh, this week. We are preparing the last web of the survey, and we try now to anticipate what is the what could be the business that the repairer will recover. Uh, it's very interesting to know to understand now that uh, the mileage of all the drivers drop dramatically during several months. 
and it's a lot of loss of business for a lot of players, but we need to anticipate what will be the situation at the end of the year. And we yeah. have at this level some optimistic point of view. Okay. So specific question now, Eric. I saw from your from your data, obviously, you know, a lot of businesses, a lot of aftermarket repair businesses closed down um, during the during the, the height of the, the pandemic. Um, but not all closed. So I was quite surprised that there was still a percentage that were open. So what were these what were these guys that were open, these businesses that were open, what were they doing during this time? Ah, yes, country per country, uh, because of the, the, the lockdown, uh, all activity was closed more or less and differently depending on the country. I told you a few minutes ago that we, we, we registered some very big difference with, between Germany and some other country, more or less or Germany, all the workshop in different channel, independent medical garages, tire specialists, VM dealer, remain open at least partially, not with yeah. normal activity, but at least partially. At the opposite side, if we uh, have a look about the figures we recorded beginning of April, end of March, beginning of April, the, the, the rate of workshop who was uh, open in Spain was, for example, only 15%. 15% of the workshop only was open. And in the workshop was open, part of them was open without any advertising. It means that the door was closed and they, they was able to work at the workshop only to maintain some urgency vehicles and this type of um, uh, vehicles, uh, private vehicles for medicine and so on. And, and so on. It was at yeah. the same time a very different level in, uh, in Italy, for example, with more or less the double, 30% of the workshop was open in Italy during the same week. Uh, really different, and at the highest level, we can register, it's not in the G5, but in Poland, in the same week, 72% of the workshop was uh, was open to the player. Then the situation was really different, and what we can register now is that um, all the players really want to go back to the normal business, and today, a lot of workshops try to taking in consideration the, all the recommendations at sanitary level, uh, of course, but all the workshop try to, to, to recover a normal situation. And of course, it's, um, it's not only the, the fact that they want to, 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 to open again the, the workshop, it's necessary to have some clients. It means that people need to be allowed to use the car. At this uh, level, it's uh, crazy to see and uh, good things to see that because in Europe, we have a lot of specification at regular technical inspection. The fact that nothing was possible during several weeks and several months. Today, a lot of drivers need to go urgently to the technical inspection and to uh, have a success uh, uh, test. They need also to make some mechanical maintenance. And this is a starting point which is quite good. We can see today, even despite the fact that a lot of workshops today are not totally open, uh, the ones who are open are to today totally full. And they need to face some other difficulties, uh, uh, for example, at logistic level. A lot of repairers told us that today they have some issue to repair the car, to make business, to invoice to the client because they don't have the parts. They don't have the correct yeah. part at the correct yeah. time. And this is a very big issue in a lot of um, uh, South uh, Europe countries. Yeah. So I was going to, I was going to, uh, I was going to mention that, Eric. So we see that we are starting to see the, the, the workshops open up. It seems to be um, during the, 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 the height of, of, of the lockdown, it seems to be there is a, there was a correlation, you correct me if I'm wrong here, between the how, how strict the lockdown was in, and therefore how, how many of the, of the garages were, were open and, and the timing of that. So th there seems to be some, some correlation there. But my, my follow-up question to that was, as, as we start to reopen, and we are seeing body shops reopen, it's not just about reopening the, uh, the garage, right? It's about... How does the, is the supply chain is the supply chain there to to support the the business reopening? And I guess we have 
many, many challenges around that. Is that correct? Yes, yes, exactly. I saw in Europe some trade groups who decided at the beginning of the lockdown, say, okay, we stop all our activity. We recommend to all our employees over Europe to remain at home. Some other uh, don't uh, choose the same strategy and say, okay, we we are in the in the supply chain. We need to be able to provide some parts and so on, at least for just the emergency vehicles and uh, and so on. And we need at least to have um, part of our team who is able to deliver uh, part. And a lot of uh, this type of player uh, discussed a lot with different governments to be allowed to work despite of the lockdown because uh, the automotive sector is also uh, part of the chain who is necessary to to, to provide food to, for population in the city and and, yes. and and so on. And then in reality, we observe that the, some trade groups who decided at the beginning, okay, remain at home, we stop all our activity. At the end, finally, they come back and they, okay, of course, we need also to help. We need to support. Uh, part of our team need to uh, provide some uh, parts, components, painting, and, and so on. And then, um, uh, at least we have a part of the, um, of the repair who are able to work, not perfectly. As I mentioned previously, a lot of players uh, complain because the correct part and the correct product they need are not available, but at least they can do something. And yeah. things are changing very quickly, and really from more or less the past week, this week, the next week, we really are in the process to recover uh, a, a situation close to the normal one. Yeah, okay. So, so I, I, guess, I, I guess, Eric, you know, there are, there are a lot of challenges. Um, and I suppose it will be ultimately to, uh, it will be the survival of the fittest in terms of um, garage garage operations, automotive aftermarket repairs. Um, have you yet? Do you have any feel yet, or could you comment on the fact that we will be there will be a lot of garages and repair shops that will not open again? You know, they will they will go bankrupt. They will cease to trade. Um, do you have a feel yet for the magnitude of that? I am, personally speaking, I am not really pessimistic. Why? Because in Europe, uh, different governments are providing different uh, assistance for uh, big and also small or family business. A lot of small garages can have some um, different um, options to um, report some specific charges and taxes and so on. And also, I can see a very big opportunity because today, after several weeks, several months of lockdown, a lot of European drivers want, uh, want to recover a normal life. And today, uh, the holiday period is arriving, and a lot of countries don't allow people to travel quite far. It's not possible today to say, okay, I, I, I have the plan to go with my family in Asia, in Philippines, in Thailand, in, uh, I don't know. No, no. Uh, people will be allowed to travel, to move, but quite close the, the way they are, the, the place they are living, in the same country or at least in Europe. And this is very good for our industry and our activity because could be that a big part of the kilometer not done during the lockdown will be done during the summer period. It means that yes. some people who yes. say, okay, I will take a flight and uh, spend uh, four weeks in Asia and then go back. They will stay there in Europe. They will use the car to visit the family, the friend. They need to tell the story of the lockdown they, they, they had. And uh, it means that it's a lot of kilometers to do it correctly, they need to maintain the car. Of course, we will have some uh, uh, some crashes and so on. And part of the business we lost during the lockdown will be recovered during the summer period. It's one of the big challenge we have inside JIPA today. It's to calculate 
how uh, the big will be the business that we will recover during the summer period. Because trust me, I am totally convinced a big part of the business will be recovered. But we need wow. precise figures. Could be that the situation is not exactly the same in Russia, in Poland, or in Portugal, or in Spain. And then it's important in GPA to provide trustable figure, good figures, and it's the reason why we, are, we will work country per country to analyze the consequence and the situation during the summer period. Fascinating, Eric. Um, that, that's, that's a very, very interesting view that you know, people staying in their own country or staying in more local in Europe, we could actually see kilometers driven increase after this uh, exactly. pandemic. So very, 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 very interesting um, uh, thoughts. And look forward to, obviously, I guess GIPA will uh, will be gathering data on that. So it'll be very interesting to see that. Um, one question, uh, one question I had um, for you was, just as a general statement, and, and, and how do you see the industry being formed post the pandemic? What do you think will be some of the key changes to the structure of the automotive uh, aftermarket uh, repair um, sector? What do you think will change? What do you think? What are some of the key practices that you th that you think will change that that the pandemic will have influenced? Again, I am more on the side to see the bottle half uh, full than half empty. Um, we have the chance to work in the aftermarket side. It's not the same for the car sales because at car sales level, a lot of discussion, a lot of, uh, we don't know the future, we don't know how the government will really uh, push the different type of incentive to move from a engine uh, combustion, internal combustion engine to an electric or hybrid one. It will affect the car sales, okay. But at independent aftermarket level, we have an incredible inertia in the structure of the car park. Then, e even if lot of in some country, if a lot of car will be sold with a new technology, hybrid, hybrid plug-in or full electric, the remaining car park will be really with the same technology for several years, at least one decade. And the positive point is that um, additionally to the pandemic, a lot of people today are thinking that perhaps it makes not really sense to travel so much for the private uh, needs. And I think that we can have there an heavy trend for several years with people who will use more the car than in the past. Because more or less, using the private car is more secure than even using the train. Because you are, you are in your car with your family. Then you, it's a kind of lockdown inside your own means of transportation. And for a lot of people, it appears as the most secure way to travel. Of course, they need to adopt a very good behavior, um, control the speed of the car, respect the rules, the regulation, and so on, uh, because we don't want to, to, to increase the number of deaths of, of, the, of the road. But uh, I think that globally speaking, it could be uh, that a lot of people in Europe recover, re rediscover all the advantage of the private car in the daily use and also for holidays and weekends and so on. Then yeah. at the end, I think that it could be very, it could be, we will confirm this feeling uh, in the following months, but uh, it could be a very good opportunity for all the uh, players involved in the after sales in the car. <coughs> uh, okay. Um, thanks, Eric. I think that, you know, that will be really interesting, won't it, to see how all that, and I'm sure Jeepa will, We'll stay close to that, and we'll see uh, we'll see more analysis from you as as that as that develops. So, look, one final question for me is: you know, we we had a snapshot of the data that that uh, the GPA has gathered on this, uh, some really high level insights to what's happened during the pandemic. But but for anybody listening to this leading lights uh, webcast, Eric. Where can, where can they go? How can they contact you? Where can they go to get more data? Because I know you have a lot more in-depth data that sits behind this. 
Just tell us a little bit about how they can contact you, how they can get in touch if they want more information. The more simple way is to contact me by email. On the website, uh, www.gpa.eu, you can see my uh, personal email address, or perhaps we can display it on the screen. And the, I encourage, I recommend to everybody to send me an email. And uh, I, will, um, I will contact the, um, the correct country manager to provide you the best answer in the, in the best uh, timing. Okay, perfect. Listen, Eric, um, final word from me. Thank you so much to yourself for your personal time uh, today. Uh, and thank you so much for sharing some of the uh, exciting uh, information that, that, that GIPA has, has, has collected during these, um, these strange times. Um, so again, thank you, Eric. Uh, and thank you for being one of the IBIS leading lights. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks, Eric, for a fascinating second Leading Lights presentation. Some really interesting data points, and it was good to hear the views of how the new normal will flow post-COVID-19. I hope everybody enjoyed the discussion today. Um, please stay tuned. We have more Leading Lights coming up from IBIS. So until then, Stay safe and see you again soon. Bye-bye.